today's video, you're gonna learn how to record vocals in Pro Tools in less than 15 minutes. Now, this is a very brief guide, and if you have any specific questions, please leave them in the comments below because you might not be the only one. So when it comes to creating a new session in Pro Tools, you wanna make sure that you find the dashboard where you see here. Now, if you don't see this when you open up Pro Tools, make sure that you have the Pro Tools app as the one that's selected. Go to the top left, go to File, and go to Dashboard. Now that the dashboard is pulled up, we're gonna create a new session. This exact template that I use every day is available for you to download and follow along in the link in the description below so on this dashboard you want to make sure that you select the template that we have for you now if you don't see the template that you've downloaded make sure you go to your downloads folder open up the template and it's going to open up the dashboard window for you i'm going to show you how to save the template into your system once we create the new session all you have to do is title it if you want to give it a title right now make sure that you select wave have the sample rate at 48 kilohertz 24 bit for the bit depth and for io settings this is a little tricky for me i'm always going to use last use because because I've already set this up. Now, if you're using a new system or if you're using a computer that hasn't had your interface on it before, make sure that you use Stereo Mix. Now, if you're coming in to verify and using our computer, just make sure that you use Last Used. Make sure you always have prompt for location checked and then we're gonna click Create. Now it's gonna ask us where we wanna save this session. I always create a folder for the client. So in this case, I'm gonna create a folder for myself. I'm gonna title it Me. Now within that folder, I'm gonna create another folder, which is today's date. It's gonna be in a six digit format like so. Now within that folder, then we're gonna save this song and i don't know how many songs i'm going to do during today's session so i'm going to title this one and for the next song we'll title it two and so on remember you can always retitle these at the end and there's another section that's going to show you how to properly rename a session now in order to save this template to your computer what you're going to want to do is go to file and save as template here you want to make sure that install template and system is checked for category you can select a category that's already pre-made or you can add a category for name you could type in a new name or you can hit the drop down menu and overwrite something that's already there i'll do a new name and for the next two options Options, just make sure you leave those unchecked so for select location for template leave that unchecked because we're going to save it in the system and for include media unless you're going to save a piece of audio that's going to be in every session template that you want to open up you're going to keep that unchecked go ahead click ok and that's saved now if we revert back to the dashboard by going file and dashboard we can create a new session and hit that new name template that we just created now that we got our template installed and opened up let's make sure that we have our audio interface selected go to setup go to playback engine now if you're at verify sounds you want to make sure that the Universal Audio Thunderbolt is selected. If you're at home, make sure your interface is available and selected. Now for the next section, I'm only specifying for those who are not at Verify Sound. So if you want to record, make sure your HW buffer size is the lowest that it could possibly go. I like 128, 64. If your computer can handle it, just fill it out. But if you're playing back or mixing, make sure that you change that back to 1024. This is going to provide you the least amount of latency that you hear back in your headphones when you're recording. As far as optimizations, you can optimize performance at low buffer sizes, but it's not necessary dynamic plug-in processing is a good thing as well but it's also not necessary you can play with these on your own time but at the time being 1024 is for mixing and 128 is for recording now for those who are recording at verify sounds if you're using our setup we're always going to keep the hardware buffer size at 1024 and i'm gonna tell you exactly why to eliminate most variables that cause latency we use direct monitoring through our uad console so pro tools has an option called low latency monitoring this feature basically mutes the live signal in pro tools and allows Allows you to directly monitor it through your interface so in our case we use the uad console app this software gives us full control over the mic's preamp and it gives us the ability to record with effects like compressors reverb and even auto tune now keep in mind these effects that you add through the uad console are not being recorded unless you specifically want them to be to do that you want to go ahead and go over to uad record but i don't recommend it i just like to have everything monitoring just so i can get the vibe and then i can actually mix afterwards i could dive deeper into the ins and outs of the uad console app but for the most part if you don't hear yourself through the headphones make sure that you have the mic unmuted there's a mute button right here now if you're recording and you don't want to hear yourself or the artist doesn't want to hear themselves then you can go to sends and you can mute the hp the third fader right here this is going to be the volume of the microphone that goes into the headphones so if they want to hear themselves more or less you can turn this fader up or down or you can completely mute them and the beauty of it is that you can still hear them but they won't be able to hear themselves if you just unmute them on this main channel right here now that we've established how we're going to monitor our vocals let's go ahead and import our beat now you might have a two track or you might have stems so i'm going to show you how to import a two track beat a two track beat is simply just the beat with one file typically you can find these where you download them from youtube or you actually bought the beat from the producer and they send you an mp3 or a wave usually when you download the beat it's going to be in our downloads folder so we're going to just go ahead and click the downloads and i'm going to drag this beat on into the beat track right here now that we have our first piece of audio in pro tools i think now is the best time to explain how the three main tools in pro tools work so there's basically three things that you're going to want to do with the clip you're either going to want to grab it trim it or fade it to make it 
it easier for you, Pro Tools has a smart tool that gives you the ability to handle all of those tasks without actually having to change which tool you're on. And it's pretty cool too. So it always depends on where you're hovered at on a clip. So a clip like this beat that we just dragged in, if I'm below this line right here, we get a grabber tool. If I'm above this line right here, we get a selector tool. If I go to the edges at the top left, we get a fader tool. And if I go to the edges in the top right, we also get another fader tool. To ensure that you have the smart tool selected, make sure that you hover up here and click this rectangle above these three squares. That's going to simultaneously click all of these and make sure that you have the smart tool selected. Now putting it into practice, we're going to want to make sure that this clip starts at the beginning of the timeline. So we got to make sure that that grabber tool is selected. We can't do it with the selector tool. We have to do it with the grabber tool. So once we get the grabber tool, go below that line, click and drag it to the left. Now, as I clicked and dragged it, you can see that it kind of snapped to this grid. So if you want it to be more precise, you can change from the grid aspect to a slip mode, which allows you to move freely with the clip. You're going to find that more practical when we're dealing with a lot of vocal clips. Before we actually get to recording, we want to make sure that the beat level is actually set properly. Now, in my template, I have a lot of processing on my mix bus. So I always turn my beats down on import negative 20 decibels. So you can hover here to the clip gain and drag that down to negative 20. It doesn't have to be precise, but you can hold command and then start dragging up or down to get a little bit more precise. The reason why I turn my beat down to negative 20 is so that I can have a consistent ratio of how loud my beat is to how loud my vocals are, since vocals are typically recorded at a lower volume. On top of that, visually, I like to be able to see the transients in the beat as well as the transients in the vocals at a similar level. I'll demonstrate that once we start the recording process. Now, before we jump into the recording process, the two main pieces of information that we want to have for the instrumental is the key and the tempo. With this particular beat that I have that I made, I already have that information within the title, but that's not always going to be the case. So the main software that I use for that information is mixed in key. This software just outlines the tempo, the key result, and a few other parameters that I might need for a session. Now, this software isn't free, but it is a great place to host all of your beats and samples. I even have a whole review about it that you could check out right after this video. But for right now, let's go ahead and grab this tempo and this key. So we see here that our tempo is 141 and our key is C minor. So we go back to Pro Tools, hover up here where it says tempo. We're going to click this. We're going to type in 141 and we see that the grid changes and aligns with our transients. Now for key, it's a little bit different. First of all, if you're not using Auto-Tune, you probably don't even have to worry about this. But if you are using Auto-Tune, you want to make sure that you set the key right for every Auto-Tune plugin in your session. The best way to do that is to use the Auto Key plugin right here. Within this template, you have an Auto-Tune plugin on each audio track. But instead of clicking on each individual plugin and changing the key for it, you can go to the Auto Key plugin and just change the key there and send it to all the Auto-Tunes that are open. So once you go to this drop down menu, you find C minor, you click Send to Auto-Tune. Now you can confirm by opening up one of the Auto-Tune plugins. Now you see that this Auto-Tune plugin is now in C minor. But remember how we monitor our Auto-Tune through the UAD console app? Yeah. So when we open up the console app, this Auto-Tune plugin is also going to be in C minor. It's also going to follow the Auto Key results. Also, as a slight reminder, this is the Auto-Tune that you're going to hear live for your live vocals. If you want more or less Auto-Tune while you record, you could turn up your retune speed. You could turn down your retune speed. You can change your input type if you're a low male, if you're an alto, if you're a soprano, just like that. And the same rules apply for the Auto-Tune plugins that are within the Pro Tools session, kind of. Because if you go back to the console app and you're recording on a retune speed of 16, you're more than likely going to want those same Auto-Tune settings for when you play it back in your ear. So when you're playing back in Pro Tools, instead of going back to each individual Auto-Tune plugin and changing these parameters, let's go ahead and talk about how I group plugins together so you only have to do this one time. Off the bat, in order to turn grouping on or off, you can either use the shortcut or you can go the long way. Now, the shortcut is Command Shift G. Now, there's no visual cue that things have actually been turned on or off, so you could always double check by clicking this arrow, clicking this drop down menu by groups. And if there's a check mark by suspend all groups, that means that grouping is turned off. If there's no check mark besides suspend all groups, then that means that grouping is turned on. And you'll also know that grouping is turned on when you try to select one audio track and it selects multiple of them. Remember to quickly turn this on or off. It is Command Shift G. So now I'm able to select one track. When I hit Command Shift G again, then I'm able to select all of the audio tracks in my session. Now keep in mind, these audio tracks that I'm referring to are the vocal audio tracks. So if it says main one or four or double one or two or telephone ad lib or regular ad lib, all of these vocal tracks are in a group together. Turning on groups allows you to edit multiple plugins at once without having to open up multiple plugins at once. 
So if I know all of the auto tunes in this session should be set to zero and I want the most amount of auto tune, then I can do that. And I can hover over here and make sure that they've all changed to zero. And then once I get the settings that I want, I can then just disregard this window and then take groups off by hitting command shift G or going down here with this drop down menu and making sure suspend all groups is checked. Now keep in mind, this would only apply to the tracks that have the same plugin on the same slot. So if you have AT Pro on the first slot on this track, but you have AT Pro on the fifth slot or sixth slot on this track, these these two plugins will not be grouped together. You have to make sure that each plugin is on the same slot and groups is still turned on. So we're just going to put that back and boom. Now let's go ahead and start recording. So for our recording process, we always have a dedicated record track. In this template, that dedicated record track is the take track and it's this green track right here. For that track, we want to make sure that we assign the right input for it. So the input that you have for your microphone, you want to select that right here. So we'll go ahead and click it, select interface and select the input that we want. Now for those that are not recording with the low latency monitoring, option you want to make sure that you have an output selected for this track as well let's go ahead and select our output and make sure we choose our speakers but if you are recording with an apollo or you're recording at verify sounds you want to just make sure that the input is selected and now you can go ahead and press record now once you record enable this track you can go ahead and head up to the transport up here and go ahead and press record enable for the transport and if your record button up here looks a little different you can right click it and make sure you have quick punch selected now if you have a track record enabled and your transport record enabled you can just press the play button and you'll start recording now, once you actually finish recording, you can just drag this clip down to an audio track. And since this is a dedicated record track, if you keep something on this track, you will not be able to hear it back. So make sure that you drag it down to one of these vocal audio tracks. If you decide to keep this take, you can go ahead and punch in by selecting where you want to start at again, making sure that your record enables are enabled, and then go ahead and press play. Now, of course, when you're punching in, usually when you record takes like this, things are going to overlap and you want to be able to trim the clip. So in a case like this, you can either trim it by going to the edge and making sure you trim it like that. Or you can select it right here with the selector tool and click the letter A and that'll trim the left side. And you can do the same thing with the right and click the letter S and that'll trim the right side off. And then you can go ahead and drag that down to the playback track. If for some reason that your beat is too loud or too low in reference to the vocals that you recorded, you could either turn the beat up or down here or you could turn the vocals up or down right here. All right. So so now we got our recording, we got our verse, we got our hook. Now we want to copy our hook over. So the main thing you want to focus on is getting that hook on a track by itself. So right now we got our verse and our hook on the same track. And you can tell right here our markers are set for hook and verse. First thing we're going to do is make sure that everything for the verse is going to be on a different track than the hook. Go ahead and click and drag this down. Now that we have our hook separated, we want to make sure that we're in the grid mode. And if you've set your tempo correctly for the session, then it's going to be easy to copy and paste this right on beat. While in grid mode, I like to place my pointer one square square away from where I have to start copying stuff from. So I'll take it from one square and I'll end off one square before I have to actually copy that stuff over. This allows me room for overlap if something's coming in before the downbeat or something's actually leaving off after the downbeat. And generally speaking, you'll know that you have a clean selection if you hover right here where it says length and this number is a whole number and it's also divisible by four. Since typically hooks are eight bars or 12 bars or something divisible by four. Now, if your hook is three bars, I'm sorry. But like I said, just grab that square square before and end off a square before you can go to file and edit and duplicate then we got that hook copied over this concept will work the same if you had ad libs or any type of layers just make sure that you get those elements on separate tracks and then you're able to copy it over just like that for us to export this song what we want to do is select the range that we want to export if we want the full duration of what the beat is then we can actually just select the beat but if we want to select a custom range we can do that as well i like to go on the beat track and just try to click and drag a selection that makes sense and then i'll go to file bounce mix here you can name your song you can keep the file type on wave as far as the mix source you can keep that on the physical output whichever your stereo speakers are you can leave compression type as pcm and add an mp3 leave file format as interleaved for your bit depth and your sample rate make sure that these parameters are the same as the session so we started with 2448 and we're going to end in 2448 you can keep pads or frame boundary unchecked you can keep import after bounce unchecked and you can make sure that session folder is selected what this is basically doing is creating a folder called bounce files and this is where our actual bounce files will be. If you're good with how it sounds and you want the export to go quicker, make sure you click offline right here. And then that's it. We'll go ahead, click bounce. This second pop-up window is for the MP3 information. You can fill it out if you want, but I tend to skip it a lot. And then it's going to bounce out. Now that we exported the song, I'm going to show you how to locate the song and rename the session. So first, you want to right click this edit button right here and click the enclosing folder. Now it's going to pull up the actual session folder that was created in the first step. You can find that song that we just exported right here and you can share this with yourself. Now we have a title for the export, but we don't have a title for the session file so what we want to do is rename these folders and make sure that we have everything as concise as possible so we're going to go back to pro tools we're going to go to file and save session 
And then we're going to go to file and close session. We're not going to save session as we're going to actually close it right now. Now, once Pro Tools is closed in the session folder, you can right click the PTX file and go ahead and rename. I'll put my new song and same thing for the folder that contains this file. Well, with about 15 seconds left to spare, I just want to say thank you for watching. Go ahead and watch this video if you need more Pro Tools help. And make sure you hit that subscribe button because we got great content coming soon about Pro Tools and more sound.